Brother lads, welcome back to the Kwasi Yasna Podcast. My name is Kwasi. Welcome back to a brand new video. It is just a few hours before the window closes. And Arsenal are making some uh, moves. We also have a plan on what we want to do. The question, will time allow us? So in this video, we dive into uh, the master plan, but also what is moving. Edin Ketia has completed his second part of medicals. That means that Arsenal are going to be receiving some money very, very soon. Aaron Ramsdale, a deal is closed um, you know, between Arsenal and Southampton. We will be getting some money as well uh, very very soon from that one and then we are also going to be talking about goalkeepers nico williams has made a decision according to gianluca di marzio um it's a very important decision in in regards to arsenal because it allows us to move on raheem sterling to manchester united does that change the dimension of what we're trying to do Ivan Sony, uh, you know, Darwin Nunes, Jakub Kivio, what's going to happen in the next 48 hours? Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. Um, now, before we get into it, I have heard that the German mystery player might actually still exist. So it could be that uh, he wasn't Serge Nabry, he wasn't uh, Leroy Sane as well, and he wasn't Niklas Fulkrug, uh, you know, to start with, or Nico Schulterback. So um, the German mystery player, if he's there, we might see in the next 48 hours um, a big surprise revelation. I mean, other players that I thought Arsenal were going to go for... Um, in German, I've been exhausted. Sun is going to stay at Bayern. Uh, maybe Coleman, but I don't think Coleman was our mystery player. Max Bayer has gone to Borussia Dortmund. So that one is no longer an option. So listen, in the next 48 hours, you might hear something about the German mystery player. If we don't, listen it's just you know it's just a few uh, links here and there so what is moving before we get into the master plan what is moving first and foremost we can confirm that edin ketia's move from arsenal to uh, crystal palace is done Arsenal will be getting 25 million plus five um, in add-ons. Today, the player has completed his second part of the medicals. That is done and dusted. And that, of course, um, is very crucial as Arsenal have been working on a basis of one in, one out. Emil Smith, Rowe, Edin Ketia, Nurta Varis, and Lokonga have gone. And we've brought in David Dreyer. We've also brought in, um, you know, Mikel Moreno and Ricardo Calafieri. And remember, by the way, uh, we still have some players that might stay and then leave in January or possibly next summer, including the likes of Kieran Tierney, including the likes of Thomas Partey and a couple of others as well. But Edin Ketia's move is very vital and very crucial to Arsenal as we are looking to replace every single penny we are spending this summer. So that has happened uh, before the last 48 hours of the window and uh, that will allow us to have some cash to splash uh, you know, as we get closer to the deadline. Now, Ramsdale is another one that holds the case. And I think with Aaron Ramsdale, Arsenal always knew that he was going to uh, leave. And that's why we agreed personal terms with um, Espanol's goalkeeper, Jean Garcia, a little bit earlier on. Now, information we are getting is that Southampton and Arsenal are, are almost on um, you know, the same terms. We, have, uh, we are in the same book, same page. Um, th the only difference would be the writing. Do they really want to pay $25 million for Aaron Ramsdale? Do, you see, do they see him uh, as that player you invest £25 million pounds in? Southampton have a big likelihood, I would say um, they have an 88.8% chance of going back into the championship. So are they trying to build a squad that will actually allow them to come back quickly? Or are they trying to build a squad that is going to allow them uh, to stay in the Premier League? For me, it would be the former, uh, you know, more than the latter. Because I've not seen them sign players that make me sit here and I'm like, okay, Southampton, I'm giving you a chance. N not really, N not really. So Ramsdale might be a part of that project that they're building under Russell Martin, um, the manager. If we go down, we can come back a little bit quickly. Now, why Ram is very important? First and foremost, Arsenal are looking to sign two new goalkeepers. One is, um, you know, Sam Pico and the other is Jean Garcia. We'll talk about that. But um, at the moment, Ramsdale holds the keys. If he leaves... Um, Jean Garcia comes in. If he doesn't leave, we don't sign Jean Garcia. And also, again, um, I'm not really sure if Arsenal want to get 25 million for this guy and then splash that money on two goalkeepers or we are going to sign a Thatcher's goalkeeper regardless of Aaron Ramsdale. I'm, I, I don't have clear information on that because prior to Ramsdale's departure, we didn't hear that Arsenal were trying to sign some people. I mean, there were rumors, there were links to, um, you know, 
Bentley at Wolves. We thought that we would sign him unless uh, until we made that ridiculous bid of 50,000. Um, we thought we were on the right track and then it disappeared. The trail disappeared. So Ramsdale is crucial for us. If he leaves today or tomorrow, two new goalkeepers are coming in so where are we on those goalkeepers john garcia like i said earlier on today um and I, again i reiterate it in this video personal terms are great with the espanol spanish goalkeeper he's just 22 Mikel Arteta thinks he would be a perfect backup for the player um in david dreyer and obviously he's young so we are looking at him as a long-term prospect but also a player who can come in and do the here and now obviously um i think we are going to see a lot of um David Rye this season playing FA Cup, Champions League, Premier League. So don't expect our second Chesco keeper to come in uh, in many games today. Arsenal will know who we are going to play in the third round of the EFL Cup. I think we will see John Garcia in the EFL Cup. Other than that, maybe maybe FA Cup. Because for me, I think this season is Arsenal's season to fight for the treble. I'm not saying we should you know, win the treble. I'm saying, can we win the FA Cup and win the Premier League? Champions League, I don't think we are Champions League ready. Honestly, this squad is a little bit uh, shaky. I think you need two more years for you to challenge as um, uh, a solid unit for the Champions League. Uh, but if we can challenge for Champions League football and then we challenge for Premier League, uh, the Premier League trophy and also challenge for the FA Cup and walk away with one or two, it would make a lot of sense. So Jean Garcia is one of the players that Arsenal are 99% sure they'll get, especially if Aaron Ramsdale leaves. Now, Ramsdale, if you ask me, I'm going to say it's a 70% chance that he goes to Southampton. Ajax are also lacking in the shadows, um, like, you know, the sorcerers that they are. Can they get him? I don't see Ajax spend that money. I mean, uh, I'm doing a documentary on, on Ajax right now, and I've just looked at the way they've been spending money, um, especially under, uh, you know, the, the new directors of football and i just feel like this is not the ix we know so i don't see them splash 25 million on a an, on an english goalkeeper that they won't be able to move on for anything above like 40 million i i, I mean I, it doesn't make any sense for me um they can invest in a young goalkeeper like you know maybe even jean garcia uh 20 20 million euros they can move him on later um so i don't think ram is going to go to ix i think he's going to go to southampton and that is a seven out of ten so jean garcia for me 99 percent um if ram leaves he's going to come in uh some people we got the trail today that um arsenal are following his trail but we really didn't get a lot of information uh on that deal and i'm gonna say at the moment Arsenal must be working behind the scenes. I mean, <laughs> this is not the time we are going to be working in public. You don't have that time. You have 48 hours, and in those 48 hours, you have to learn the lessons. You have to go through the lessons um, that we learned from uh, the Aston Villa game. Then you've got to prepare for Brighton. Not never been an easy game uh, in our lives. Brighton, d decent side. I've seen them under Fabian Hasler. I think they are they're still good. Many people really don't treat them. I uh, don't treat the manager. He's just thirty years, but he's good. He's really, really, really good. So in those forty-eight hours, you're learning the lessons from Aston Villa. You're preparing for Brighton. You're also put, you know, taking your new signings to you know up to speed. Mikel Marino and Ricardo Calafiori, and then you're working on deals to come in not going to be an easy uh you know a, a, an easy ending to the window but at the moment i would say some people is a deal arsenal are working on uh behind the scenes again this one i'm going to go with a 99 percent chance that it will happen now Jakub Kivio in the last few days of the window there was expectation that one of the big Milan giants or even uh, one of the boys in um, you know Italy would take him Juventus have been there Napoli have been there I, I can't believe that Napoli have signed Scott McTominay for 30 million I just wanted to say that I just wanted to say that right no bad blood uh, but um uh, Kivio has been informed by Arsenal that we will not be selling him this summer is it selfish yeah it's selfish but i think what michael has looked at here is that he wants to have um options when you look at somiasu and his availability and um the assurance that he will be there the assurance that he will stay uh you know fit that is very very small so i think 
Jakub Kivio staying is directly linked to Arsenal having fears over the availability and fitness issues of Takero Tomiyasu. So Kivio stays, he won't be leaving, but again, he's a player that I expect to leave in January. He's a player that I expect to leave come next summer. Now, um, that is what we know. What about the plan? What are we really working on? What is Arsenal working on behind the scenes? What is Super Mikel cooking? And what is Edu Gaspar cooking? First and foremost, we've been trying to trigger the release clause of Nico Williams, but that is now over. The player, according to Gianluca Di Marzio, have a problem with Gianluca Di Marzio. I think his layer of credibility has diminished over the years especially when it comes to transfers so i i really do take his information with a pinch of salt but the player according to dimazio has said i'm going to stay at atletico bilbao for one more year i'm not going to move on and therefore a move to arsenal is unlikely a move to FC Barcelona is completely off this summer. So it could happen next summer. It could happen the summer after that. Now, Arsenal wanting to trigger the release clause of Nico Williams shows you how much, in, uh, how much in, you know, investment we have had in, um, you know, in him. And again, I, I don't want to lie. This is a summer where Arsenal have been working on market opportunities. Mikel Marino, market opportunity. Joan Garcia, market opportunity. Sam Pico, market opportunity. Ricardo Calafiore, market opportunity. I, I, I don't think it's a summer where Arsenal have been, you know, uh, just jumping onto any quality player. Some players have been more quality than what we have signed, but we've decided to go for uh, what we believe is the market opportunity. Because, for instance, Fabian Ruiz is a better player than Mikel Moreno. Of course, Mikel Moreno brings what Mikel Atta wants, but Arsenal have just decided we are looking at, uh, you know, we're looking at um, Mikel Moreno as a, a market opportunity. We are going to go for that. A very good example is Benjamin Shesko, and after Shesko, we have not tried to sign any other player or, you know, getting close. Now, Williams doesn't come. He's not coming. Now we can confirm that from Dim Dimazio. What is the plan? The plan was that Arsenal were looking at Raheem Sterling. Now, the next 48 hours, could we see a U-turn when it comes to Raheem Sterling? What is happening at, um, uh, you know, uh, with, with Raheem Sterling? With Raheem Sterling, we have had negotiations between Manchester United and Chelsea for a potential swap deal. Sterling to Manchester United, Jadon Sancho to Chelsea. That will not happen because Sancho has agreed a deal to join um, Juventus. Juventus and Man United have also agreed a loan plus obligation for Jadon Sancho to end up at Juventus. Juventus have just got rid of Chiesa and signed Jadon Sancho. Um, okay, I will need to read their statement as to why they have done that. But before we do that, let's focus on Arsenal. Um... So, so, listen, with Sterling, he might not end up at Manchester United. So, is there a possibility that Mikel Arteta could want to um, rekindle the love and connection and the work relationship that he actually had with Raheem Sterling at Manchester City? There is a big possibility. And we're also talking about a market opportunity. Remember, this market, this summer, I tell you, this is a guarantee. Next summer is going to be more interesting than this one. This has been a bogus summer for Arsenal. I think next summer we'll see more departures, departures that will hurt even deeper than, you know, Emu Smith Rowe, probably party leaving, probably a player like Trossard maybe leaving, and then we'll have to replace important players. But uh, with Raheem Sterling, he's a market opportunity, willing to cut his wages, desperate to play football at a top club, and desperate to prove a point. You know, with Raheem, he's, he's, he's at that point in, in his life where he's like, I want to go and show them that I am not finished. Now, the one thing I want to say is that Arsenal desperately need a left winger. Gabriel Martinelli, with his football of playing with his head down, I am not saying he's not more talented than many of the players in our squad. I'm saying someone explained to me how no one at Arsenal is looking at Martinelli and he's telling him, play with your head up, look at options, right? Don't just cross it into the penalty area uh, as if, you know, you have a, a classic number nine, Alan Harlan. 
you've got to get to the byline you've got to get in the penalty area look up Odegaard is always arriving at the uh, you know at the end of, uh, at the end of, uh, at the edge of the box uh, Rice is also doing so Kai Havers is making runs in the middle and Saka is always at the back post why aren't you picking any of them up because you're playing with your head down so as we try to win the league I don't think we are going to coach him to play with his head up so a Raheem Sterling would be a very very good option but at the moment Raheem Sterling is not an avenue we are exploring okay um Darwin Nunes is off Liverpool have said no we are gonna keep him we don't want to sell him we are not thinking of selling thank you Liverpool uh God bless you so the the other two options the Arsenal are, are concretely um well poised to do are um Ivan Tony and Victor Rossiman. So with Ivan Tony, you're looking at a guy that is available at a cut price. With Osimen, you're looking at the biggest bargain in the world. Like, I don't know how is that cheap, right? I don't know how is that cheap, but he is that cheap. He's 65 million euros. I'll tell you this. If Arsenal sign Osimen for 65 million euros, Kai Havers will be more expensive than Victor Rossiman. In what world? Is Kai Havers as a striker more Im more expensive than Victor Rossiman? So the plan is there. We are looking to do a forward player. We are looking to do go two goalkeepers. We are looking to get some players, more players out, especially Aaron Ramsdale. But Jakub Kivy has been told he can't leave this summer unless otherwise. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will be speaking hour after hour until the door shuts.